Hey, what's up guys? How's it going? This right here is the 2023 Chevy Colorado LT trim. And I'm gonna give you guys an outside walk around, an inside tour, and tell you pretty much everything you need to know about this truck. So like I said, guys, this is gonna be an in-depth video. So we're gonna talk about almost every single square inch of this truck. to give you guys a sense of, you know, everything you get into when you get the LT trim specifically. So this is not any off-road focus. This is pretty much right above from the work truck trim. Um, but because it's a step above, there are some things that you can, you can get um on this that aren't available on the work truck and starting with that we're going to talk about the exterior design which is very different from the work truck trim and i'll have a full video on that if you guys want to check that out but because it's the lt trim you get a painted kind of gray uh bar that goes across the front right there and the traditional bow tie which is nice you can get these led uh, headlights as an option but you uh also get the base uh, halogen lights which look old but they're they're available you want to save some money on that uh everything here is functional you get functional vents here all throughout the bottom right there on top there aren't functional vents that's across the board on all the trims so don't feel like you're missing out on anything there uh going down here um pretty traditional plastic matte plastic uh matte black front bumper and then right there you do get tow hooks they are just black and nothing special like the red ones you get on a z71 or like a zr2 and then underneath the air dam there's vents right there for cooling uh, but aside from that your approach to departure angle probably not your biggest concern if you're getting this truck um but just like the uh you can get on a z71 you get the fog lights on the side right here nothing here is functional it's just a bunch of plastic um and yeah as far as the front that's pretty much it. you do get the same hood though so the hood has a very nice you know very aggressive lines that kind of go forward it looks really cool when you're inside the car looking out as well which is nice from like a driver experience standpoint but this is like the the, the value uh proposition or again with some comfort you know uh, going on the side here, you notice the, the fender is some nice little, no plastic molding like you'd get on the Z71 or Trail Boss or ZR2, but it is kind of indented and that's shows that, you know, you could probably put your own aftermarket if you wanted to, to do that. You have that option. And as far as the tire option on this one, you get the Goodyear uh, Wrangler uh, Fortitude HT tire measuring 265-60R18. And this one has an optional 18-inch wheel um, that you uh you can get on this truck and as far as the side goes it's pretty it's pretty simple it kind of goes to the rest you get the you know blacked out mirror caps here uh to get the matte black surround on the, the windows this one has the keyless uh entry if you want a button right there you can lock it lock it all that good stuff no steps probably an option from the dealership or uh, when you build the vehicle um and then going around the back here like i said you can only get these and the uh, four-door crew cab configuration with a five-foot truck bed. Uh, so just keep that in mind. If this is not something you want on the truck, you don't get the truck. This one does have the four-by-four badge. This is it's a uh, four-wheel drive setup. Uh, you can get these in two-wheel drive. And uh, we'll talk about powertrains as well. But all these come with an eight-speed automatic. Okay, the four-by-four, kind of indicating that you have that. Um, this does have pretty standard uh, halogen or you know regular light bulbs for your light simple easy to replace just think of it that way um if uh you want to look at it from a positive standpoint uh you know chevrolet stamped into the tailgate and then you get the same same bodywork in the back um I've, down here on the steps you get the nice kind of inverted i gotta call it like truck uh or work boot kind of tread design it's really nice when you're putting your foot on there you get a lot of good grip a lot of good traction um and it's uh I'd use it a lot. And same thing here. You get a little more of a coarse uh, tread pattern, but similar nonetheless. And it's an attention to detail. They could have gone and put some simple lines and called it good, but this prevents it from being slippery. And I don't know if you've ever gone on a truck and slipped your foot, but it's, it's happened to me and it sucks. It's not fun. Uh, this one does have the trailer package. You can tell because of the trailer connects right there. You have your uh, receiver down there and uh, you get this light here for, for illuminating your, your license plate, uh, both on the left and the right hand side. Let's open up the uh, truck bed, soft open. Um, I'm gonna hold it up here real quick, show you guys. If you push this in there, the little cable, you do it on both sides, you get down to this level, and that gives you a nice flat uh, load support. If you wanna put drywall, you wanna put uh, plywood, or anything long and flat, you wanna line up with your wheel arch, you could do that with this. And then it's easy as hooking this up on both sides, and then you want, you just take it out there, and you can drop it all the way down. Now when it's down, this one has the uh, first and never, no one's done it before, 
honestly surprised. It's a good idea. Just this kind of, you know, little cubby here. Storage compartment. Uh, you could put ice in here. It's, it's uh, There's a drain plug down there. And uh, you can put, you know, your tie downs. You put ratchet straps. You, straps you could put carabiners. Whatever equipment you need for whatever trip you're going on. You can stow it here. You don't have to commit to space underneath the back seat. You don't have to commit to your truck bed and having to just fly around. It's in here. And it's sealed from the, from the you know, the outside elements, which is nice. I don't know. It's not, I don't know if it's watertight. I doubt it. Uh, and then if you see this insert right here, I'd probably DIY something for that to make it, make my storage uh, more versatile. But that's intended if you want to get the kicker sound system. That's where they would install it too. So just keep that in mind. So why that's there, that's your answer. Close that up here. Lock it in place. One, two. And then the nice thing is you don't have to even push it down. I feel like given the gap, you'd want to press it down, but it locks in. You don't need to push it down. So as far as you can get up to 17 tie downs on this truck, which is like the most, I think, ever, which is insane. Um, you do get uh, some option to put some accessories here. There are some crossbars you can put on there, or you can also bring them laterally from one side to another if you want to have some more accessories. And I can show you guys for that if we do the trail boss out, uh, out front. And then, um, so this has a really, it's a five foot truck bed, but it's pretty deep as far as, sorry, it's pretty tall. Um, and this one has a spray and bed liner. You also get a 120 volt, 400 and uh, 400 watt uh, outlet right there, which is nice. Uh, but aside from that, just get the Chevy bow tie and call it good. It's a truck bed guys. I don't know what more you really need from it. Um, oh, I almost forgot. This one also has a, a freedom unit measure that goes across the entire uh, tailgate. It is only in inches because, you know, we don't care about centimeters because we're in America. Uh, it's it's nice. It's just rough course measurements. If you need to work off the surface and do some rough measurements, it's there. I know Ford does that to like a greater degree uh, and really makes a lot of clamps and, you know, different uh, features out of the tailgate. But for a midsize truck, it's pretty solid. Yeah, like I said, guys, you have your parking sensors out back on uh, the plastic here. And this is a, a painted surface. But let's uh, let's hop inside here and let's do a quick dive inside. Oh, so it does have blind spot monitoring, just in case you're wondering. Let's hop in here. First thing you notice, guys, is the materials. You get a small water bottle here, holder. I wish it was bigger. A little cubby here, you could fit some little bits. And then you have this right here, materials, handle, door handle, and then lock on lock. Then your switch gear down here for your mirrors, your windows, auto up, auto down on the driver's side, and then the rest is just uh, no automatic assist. Uh, the seats here, pretty basic seats. They get the job done um, and they're power assisted, but there aren't memory seat options on this uh, on this trim. So keep that in mind. Uh, when you go down here, because it has a tow package, you have your uh, trailer brake, your gain adjustment, and this right here is your uh, brightness adjustment. Uh, but that's all there is here. I wish there was an auxiliary pad. You can kind of add some auxiliary switches, but... Um, yeah, you have your vent here, open, close, some trim there. But let's let's hop inside real quick. All right. So I'm gonna close the door here, my foot on the brake, and that's what's gonna trigger this animation to take place. And it looks cool. I'll let it play out here. Gimmicky, but I'm a fan. I'll fall for it. I'll be honest. Um, but yeah, this is the largest uh, center display of any truck in this size. But to be fair, no other truck in this uh class has a display that it's not that competitive of a segment for you to be checking off that box but it still has it and it's standard across the board which is huge it's really huge and guys another thing there was no light switching here and a lot of people were complaining about this you can tap right there and i haven't even turned on the car you can you can actually interface with that so you can tap here okay went asleep but in accessory mode it will um it'll do that if i turn on the car we're actually turn on the engine here but if you need to turn on lights you can you have that access right here pretty quick buttons would be nice i agree we want more buttons but this has gone that way and i don't think it's a, a like a negative to this car to be honest uh so this system is uh has google built in right so you have google assistant you have google maps uh which is awesome i love this uh and it's really responsive look how like smooth and buttery this is i'm a fan guys google built into cars is a move, but it still has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto if you'd like. Uh, but let's go through the menus here because this is an in-depth video 
I said you guys are gonna be getting every single square inch, you guys are gonna be getting every single square inch. So you have your uh, door settings, your light settings, detail settings on top of that little quick menu that we showed you earlier, cargo lights, high beams, your headlight settings if you'd like. Uh, you have your drive and park, traction control, only thing there, vehicle settings, you can get into your team driver assist, rear seat reminder, buckle to drive, climate, air quality, collision detection, power door locks, all that good stuff, right? Um, let's go back here. Fog lights, quick access, um, all that stuff's nice and set up. This one does not have, this one just has a rear view camera, top, actually one, this one does have the camera system, holy crap. Okay, it's not the underbody cameras that I showed on the Z71 trim. Uh, but you have your trailer camera, and honestly, for most people, this camera system is really all you need. Um, so I like the resolution that GM uses on their cameras. It's, uh, it's a good quality camera. Look at that. Is that guy walking? Anyway, uh, this one has dual zone climate control, and it's automatic. So we'll uh, oh, I'll turn that off. But it's it's well integrated. We'll lower that. Um, let's go back here. Let's keep going through this real quick. Um, we talked about vehicle settings. You have your phone. If your phone is on the wireless charger, which is down here and nice and huge, and it's got this nice textured pattern, which I like, uh, if it's not on there properly, you'll get a little alert here saying that your phone's not properly on the wireless charger, which is cool. Uh, you connect your phone via Bluetooth, uh, and then you have your maps. I showed you then your music, which is pretty standard stuff. And then you have your home all your apps you can download stuff from the google play store you have your climate menu if you want some more detailed control you could do that here so there is a touch interface for people who like the techie stuff there are buttons for people who are driving and don't want to be distracted you have that which is great i like how the recirculation is a little truck appreciate that attention to detail which they've honestly, they've honestly put on this truck so uh let's keep going through the menus here you have your trailering mode or you add a new trailer which is nice you make checklists checklists excuse me um trailing menu trailer mode is in the drive mode uh, which we'll show later um swipe to the left camera your controls here which is another menu for that wi-fi hotspot and uh all that good stuff so we kind of already did it but going down here you have your all window down button which is nice i wish it was also an up button but it's an all window down button auto start stop hazards lane keep and an auxiliary switch so that's nice you have usb a and usb c ports uh, that's the case in the front and the back, which we'll show. Uh, but I like the fact that there's two options. So for you who aren't committed to the USB-C life, uh, they got some time. So down here, you don't get the drive mode selector on this on this vehicle. You have your four high, four low. It's this standard uh, um, transfer case. No, uh, four high or two high, excuse me. Your trailer mode down here, and then you have auto. So you have some option with this four-wheel drive system, but not as much as you do on the Z71 or the Trail Boss that we'll be seeing uh, electronic parking brake, standard stuff, eight speed automatic that's flipped on all these vehicles and, um, your low range where you can use your buttons right here on the rocker to adjust your, what gear you want to be in down here. You have your cup holders. Uh, it's nice rubber texture here. And then you got that nice little pattern down there, that camo like pattern. And then you have a slot for your phone here, which is cool. This here right here, the armrest is nice. It's, uh, got like a friction hinge. So it holds its position. So it won't close down which obviously you don't want but it it does give you a feeling of like kind of solid build quality which i like um nice little tray here with a felt liner and then a large center storage pretty deep has a nice texture at the bottom which is nice you can pop that in close it down and it feels good there's not crazy amount of padding but i mean look it's a truck <laughs> same thing in the back you get your cup holders there it's a phone slot um but uh as far as trim goes, it's kind of like a painted surface here. It's gloss black on other trims and then a nice texture on the ZR2. Uh, but going up top there, you have your handle, but you don't have one on this side or up here. Uh, so just keep that in mind. You have a standard mirror, um, OnStar, your buttons up there. No sunroof on this vehicle. Then your uh, different light options if you want to turn them on or just have them tied to the door. As far as visor goes, lights turn on um mirror and then it opens and slides all that good stuff uh let's talk about the steering wheel guys so this is a leather wrap steering wheel on this on this trim and you get your menu controls here so you can actually adjust um let me just press it there real quick so yeah, you can go from tachometer you have your trip information 
your music. And then this one didn't have the telemetry that you get on the Z71, which shows your pitch, roll, and all that good stuff. Relatively simple. Not a whole lot of customization, but it gives you a whole lot of information. And you have your cruise control buttons here. You have your quick hotkey for music if you want to switch to source. Your voice command, which is Google Assistant, unless you're hooked up to Apple CarPlay, it's Siri or Android or whatnot. Um, you have your phone uh, hang up or answer on a rocker. And then you have your, you can switch there. And a physical volume knob and power button. We got to appreciate that, guys, these days. So let's turn this car off here. And uh, let's actually hop into the engine bay and talk about powertrain. That's a, that's a big reason why you get a truck, right? Oh, before we go, though, I need to show you there is a cubby right here, right behind this Bose speaker grill. So just keep that in mind. No heads up display, but you get a little forward alert light that pops up if you're too close to something in front of you and you might hit it. It'll alert, with a, alert you with a red light. So with that, we'll open the hood. I go in here. All right, guys. So let's talk numbers. This is the 2.7 liter four cylinder. Now there are two different hardware wise 2.7 liter four cylinders. Uh, and the base that you can get on the LT trim is the, uh, the lowest rated it makes. 237 horsepower and 260 pound feet of torque. And that one cannot be tuned up to any more power from the factory, right? Uh, but on the LT trim, you can get the higher output engine that makes 310 horsepower and 391 pound feet of torque. And that has the hardware that allows you from either the dealership or later on, you can get the 2.7 liter high output configuration, which makes 310 horsepower and 430 pound feet of torque. So two different mechanical 2.7 liters, three different uh, configurations out of this 2.7 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine. And this is a same 2.7 liter that you see in the Silverado. So if it's there, you mean if it's good enough for the Silverado, it's good enough for this truck. It has um, history in production, in service. So you're not getting something that's new for the first time in this truck. And yeah, they really were able to build this truck around this engine which is nice. Uh, in the highest output configuration, it can tow up to 7,700 pounds, which is great. You do get less for the lower uh, power outputs. So again, uh, things I would like to see, there's a little Easter egg there. You've seen this around the vehicle. It's a little, little pattern, uh, but I would have either, you know, some uh, struts would have been nice uh, to have this open up higher because this isn't that high. I mean, it's good enough, but having this off to the side, if you're gonna be working on your your vehicle if you have to do anything um nice to have some a little bit better access but i'm sure access but i'm sure this is good enough for most so yeah i like the versatility when it comes to the uh the powertrains that you can get um i would probably opt for the one that has the hard hardware but not tuned to the high output because if it has the hardware support higher output that means it'll probably last you a little bit longer it'll be low stress on some higher rated components a higher rated system for that matter uh, as far as oil goes, 5W30 is the recommended oil. And this thing runs on regular pump gas. You don't have to put premium in it or anything. You have your windshield wiper fluid off to the left. And then you have your coolant off the right. And your brakes. So, brake fluid. All right, let's close this. Just drop it like that. Sounds solid. Um, and let's hop into the, uh, the back seats here. Actually, but real quick before we hop into the back seats, let's show the, uh, the rear real quick so you have a spare tire down here and you have leaf springs your shocks um, and your differential so let's take a look in there you guys can peruse around real quick all right as far as fuel cap goes guys capless fuel filler um, so you would need a, a nozzle as a funnel that it comes with if you need to fill up from like a tank or something if you're low on gas or run out but guys, I'll be honest, accessing this bed from the side, way easier than on a Silverado. It's slower, it's a more accessible car. I mean, I'm not a tall guy, but yeah, that's something I like about it. Going on to the back seats. So a lot simpler, um, right? Simple materials. You do get a nice little soft touch material here, but um, plastics. You get a little textured pattern in there, for what it's worth. I guess they, they did it, so that's nice. Um, small bottle holder. Plastic is pretty simple, nothing crazy. Um, if you lift this up, um, hold up. Oh, you have to lift this latch here. You need two hands to operate. It's not a one-hand operation, so we'll just. You get storage here. It comes with your, uh, your jack. That's a fuel nozzle I was telling you guys about. 
Uh, if you have to fill up gas, you have to replace a flat. But there's storage down here. Is it amazing? No, but is it there? Yes. So you just fold it down, bring that latch up right here, and it comes down. You can fold these flat if you want better visibility. Um, I don't know if there's a way to bring this whole thing down. I feel like there should be, but I don't see it. Uh, you get a tiny little headrest in the middle, which I find hilarious. Um, as far as center cup holders, I believe this is an option. It's not standard. And I hate how there's no handle. I wish there was like a pull tab. You can easily reach into it. But you have one, two, three, four, five, six cup holders in this truck, which is more than enough. And then the four bottle holders on each door. So you fit a bunch of drinks or a bunch of storage compartments. The back here, you do get vents for the rear, which is nice. And then you have USB A and USB C port. And then below that, you have a wall outlet down here on this. You can get on the, the work truck configuration uh, if you don't have that option. I believe it's an option. Um, but yeah, floor mat pockets there. You do get handles up here for the rear seat. Passengers can have that. And then you have a light in the back that's tied. Either it's off or it's on, but because it's on with the door, um, it turns turns on. So. That is pretty much the back seat of the truck. It's a 60-40 as far as this compartment's not all one bench like you'd have in, say, the, the Maverick, which is a way smaller truck. Uh, because I don't think anyone's really shown the top, let's just take a look at the roof of this truck. So the roof of this truck is pretty standard stuff. Get a little short throw antenna up here. Nothing crazy. Your third brake light over there. And you can see the bed from this perspective. I mean, I feel like a lot of people are going to hop up on their bed. On the truck and take a look at it, strap things. I don't know. I don't know what you're gonna do up here, honestly. Let's be honest. Uh, but yeah, um, let's close this here. Let's look a look at a little bit of the underside of the front of the car so you guys can take a look at that. See everything. This one doesn't have the underbody protection that you would see in a ZR, uh, ZR2, ZR71, Trail Boss. So just keep that in mind. Um, this is an off-road focus by any means. This is more for like the person who wants a midside truck, but also wants to daily drive it. Doesn't really want to go off-roading. So I don't know. I think it looks good. Um, driven around this the engine, and it's been it's been great. Um, ASP transmission works well, and then this one has the option for four-wheel drive. So in theory, you can get this in just rear-wheel drive. Save yourself on some cost. Get the engine that you need based on what you're using it for. Um, even the base engine be fine for most people so uh with that i'm gonna wrap it up here thank you guys for watching if you have any questions drop them in the comment section i'll try my best to answer them and yeah see you guys in the next video peace